Morning, everybody, and welcome to this screencast on isometric and orthographic drawings. So in short, we've been sort of evolving our thinking from where we know or see geometry used in the real world. We looked at a little bit of measurement concerning those objects or those applications, and now it's time to consider how we represent them visually. So that is 2D and specifically 3D objects using different types of drawings. So the first type of drawing, and you may have seen these before, uh, especially if you have done some art or you do like to sketch and draw, this is definitely something for you, um, isometric drawings. So I want you to study these two particular drawings and start thinking about the characteristics that would qualify these as being isometric. Okay. Well, there are a few properties, definitely three things, or a few things we can say about these types of drawings. So jot these down um, on the hand that you can provide them. So here are those three particular things. Okay. So we can see that it's on a 2D surface, so we're trying to draw a 3D on um, 2D. Um, notice that the object is always rotated to a corner view. So based on the corner, you can see the top of the object. So you can see um, right from the top down. You can see the front of the object. And you can also see the right hand side of the object. Okay, same thing over here. So top, front, and then the right hand side. Um, also notice that the scale or the dimensions are shown on the diagram. So this is important in terms of trying to construct anything without a scale, we simply would not know how to read the diagram in order to construct the object. Okay, so jotting those things, three things down, it's a 3D drawing, 2D, it's rotated to a corner view, and then your scale or dimensions are shown. And those are isometric drawings. Um, another style of drawing is something called an isometric perspective drawing. And I'm sure at some point in time you've done some perspective drawings and or uh, even outside of school, you've just sort of played with drawing three-dimensional figures or uh, objects and scenes that do require something called perspective, okay? So I want you to think about these two cubes that are on screen and uh, think about the difference between being isometric and being perspective. So with isometric, there's something you can add to your image, and that is the following. Okay, so if we were to, actually I'll leave that one over here, that's for afterwards. This is the one I want here. There we go, perfect. If we were to take each of the sides and extend them, just keep on drawing them into some, into infinity, you would notice that these lines, so the ones I'm highlighting right now, the ones that have been drawn out, that these ones here, they would never converge. Okay, so they would never meet or cross over. So that's a feature of an isometric drawing. Okay. Let me just move this over a little bit for the other one. Now with the perspective drawing, it's isometric, but the interesting thing here is, see if I can move that a little bit more, have a look here, is you can see already that the lines upon extending the sides, they will at some point, we call it a point at infinity, that they are going to cross over on one another. Okay, it's going to happen. So here are a few notes we can say about these. So please jot these down. And it's more or less the one. <laughs> the parallel sides, okay, so any sides that happen to be parallel to each other, um, they slant off okay, to a point. So that's a point at an infinity. Okay. So one thing we can do, and just to emphasize this a little bit more, is that when you are drawing something that's freehand, 
So if I'm trying to draw something as simple as a box, okay, so what we'll do is we'll set some point off on the distance at whatever angle you like. So we'll call that the point at infinity. So what you would do is you would draw in these guidelines. Okay, so these lines that are going to uh, meet at the point at infinity. Okay. Then what you would do is you would then set the depth of your object as you see fit. So we could draw, let's say we draw that side there and then directly across and parallel to the front side, we do this. Okay. So this is an isometric perspective drawing. Okay, isometric perspective drawing. And then after that, simply take your pencils, eraser, and wipe out the guiding lines, and you've got yourself an isometric perspective drawing. Last but not least are the orthographic drawings, and you might see these more often in terms of things that um, kind of look like a blueprint in nature. So you can see here on the left-hand side this particular example. Okay? We start out with... Um, a 3D representation, and then we then manipulate that into a, a two-dimensional, what we call an orthographic projection, okay? Same thing is happening over here with this particular object. So you can't see it on your handout all that well, as it didn't copy well, but uh, take note of the different views of this vehicle. So you've got your front, back, top, and side views. So the characteristics of an orthographic line are the following. Okay, so these three here. So it's 2D rep of a 3D, okay, which was the same as the, uh, the isometric. Um, but it shows what the object looks like from the top, front, and right sides. Okay, again, much like the isometric. And then the scalar dimensions are to be listed on the diagram. Now, they are not here in my diagrams, okay, but they should be available on your diagrams. Okay. So those are the three types, and what we'll have you do is run through some practice with that to see if you can also conjure up different diagrams of isometric and orthographic drawings.